Hi Johnny Jaguars, this is Miss Schooler again with Soof and we are up to chapter 12. This one is called More Than a Tail Loves to Wag. Beep beep boppity beep kapow I crowed. No translation necessary, my mother laughed. I may not be fluent and beepish, but I'm pretty sure that means your happy duck is coming home. How much farther, I asked. It's over on the other side of town. We should be there in about 10 minutes. I couldn't believe it. Only 10 minutes until I could hug Duck? 10 minutes until I could kiss his head and sniff his ears? And man, oh man, does 10 minutes feel like a million years when you can't wait to see your dog. Put the pedal to the metal, I cried happily. My mother laughed again. Where in the world did you pick up that expression, she asked. Oh, Mr. Taylor says it all the time. He also says, get the lead out, jumpin' Jehoshaphat, holy Toledo, and jickety jack. Jickety jack? Well, I don't know exactly what it means, I said, but it's definitely a good thing. My mother smiled. Mr. Taylor is a good thing, isn't he? He's the best teacher in the whole world, I gushed. He doesn't make me join in if I don't want. He lets me color in all the O's on the bulletin boards, and today he told Lindsay Toffle she could sit out in the hall her own self if she didn't like the sounds I was making. What sounds were you making? My mother asked, glancing over at me. Nothing you haven't heard before. We must be almost there by now. Can't you drive any faster? My mother ignored the question and kept speedometer steady at 55. Well, it's good to be talking again, she said. I've missed you. Mom, I moaned, not now. I was finally feeling happy about something. Did she have to ruin it with some corny, blibbity blabbing about missing me? Please hear me out, my mother insisted. I have to get this off my chest. Fine, I said, crossing my arms and heaving a giant sigh. I'm listening. I feel awful about what I said to you after I found the lighter, my mother began. I know you would never have done anything to put our family in danger. It was a terrible thing for me to say, and I'm beyond sorry. I knew I was supposed to say that I forgave her, or that it was okay, or not to worry, but as awful as I'd felt when she accused me of setting the fire, it wasn't the main thing I was mad at her about. If I said that I forgave her, it would feel like I was forgiving her for everything. I wasn't ready to do that, and I didn't know if I ever would be. If you say so, I told her instead. It was clear that wasn't the response she'd been hoping for, but it was the best I could do under the circumstances. A few minutes later, we slowed down, pulled off the highway, and turned up a narrow dirt road. The houses were small and close together, the yards full of weeds and plastic toys. Julie's text said 54 Briar Road, but do you see any numbers on these houses? My mother asked, craning her neck to see. There it is, I shouted, pointing to a greenhouse with some faded numbers peeling off the side of the mailbox. There was an old car up on cinder blocks in the driveway and a snowmobile with a for sale sign on it parked in the middle of the front yard. I looked around, but there was no sign of duck. Well, let me check again to make sure we're in the right place, my mother said. But before she could pull up the text on her phone, the screen door banged open and a skinny woman smoking a cigarette stepped out. She had on short shorts and a tank top with a big red tongue printed on it. You the folks that lost a dog, she called out to us. Is he okay? I asked, jumping out of the car. He's not hurt, is he? Looks fine to me. My husband caught him digging in the garbage this morning, probably after the chicken bones I chucked in there last night. Poor duck. He must have been hungry after three days out on his own. I would feed him something really nice for dinner. Maybe some of those special hot dogs Julie had mentioned. Well, we're so glad you called, my mother said. We've been worried sick about him. You see, our house caught on fire the other night and... Where is he? I interrupted. Where's Duck? Now he's tied up round back, she said, pointing with a hand that was holding the cigarette. It left a little trail of smoke behind it, like one of those planes that writes messages in the sky. 
As I rounded the corner of the house and caught sight of his wagging tail, I felt like my heart was about to burst right out of my chest. Duck! I shouted. Duck! He let out a happy bark, turned around, and ran toward me as far as the rope would allow. Only it wasn't Duck. This dog was mangy and old. His teeth were yellow, and instead of a red collar, there was a dirty bandana tied around his neck. I felt like I'd been punched in the stomach. Well, guess we better call the shelter then, the skinny woman said when she found out the dog wasn't ours. Somebody must be looking for him. Why did this have to happen, I wailed as we drove away from the greenhouse empty-handed. I feel like I've lost Duck all over again. I know, sweetie, my mother said. I feel the same way. No, you don't, I sobbed. You don't know anything about how I feel. It's my fault he's gone. It isn't your fault Duck ran away, my mother said. It isn't anyone's fault. I shook my head. I should have made sure he was with us when we left the house. You mustn't blame yourself, she said. You were frightened. We all were. Nobody was thinking straight. I covered my face with my hands and moaned. We never should have made those stupid flyers. The drawings don't even look like Duck. There weren't enough markers, so the colors aren't right. We can get more markers, my mother said. As many as you need. We'll go to the store right now. You don't get it, Mom. Markers aren't going to fix anything. We need a photograph. But I don't have any pictures of Duck. They're all in the house. Or maybe they're burned up, gone forever, like everything else I've cared about. My tears were flowing hot and heavy now and it felt like a giant hand was squeezing my middle. Suddenly, without warning, my mother jammed on the brakes so hard I might have gone right through the windshield if I hadn't been buckled in. What are you doing? I cried. We're going back. To Scott and Julie's? No, she said, turning the car around so fast the tires squealed. We're going home. And that's the end of chapter 12. It surprised me that that was not Duck. Did, were you surprised about that too? Another element of surprise. <laughs>